Hey, meteorologist James Whelan here with a look at an all new impact zone and surf forecast for this week. It does look like everything gonna work out from if you watched my show on Sunday night, it looks like things are still looking good. I know that was the long range forecast and we're always weary on the long range forecast, but it does look like things are gonna work out. We're gonna get another swell down here. Uh, it is, there is a little bit of changes. There are a couple changes and we're gonna talk about those now. First, let's look outside and see what's going on it, along the area right now and what we have going on you see this little low this is what made us the waves that little swell we had uh, for Sunday Monday ish time frame I went surfing I caught a couple good waves this is really weak but if you read my column you saw that I said it was probably going to be pretty weak and not much over waist high which it which it was uh, and you see that low kind of combine with this front and then blow on up so that's history nothing else there uh, what we do have is another little frontal boundary that actually the models are pushing through here and we could see something very interesting here uh, by the weekend and uh, the one thing that did not happen that i was saying on sunday was the little low that the models were trying to develop right here in the nook and that would have brought a nice little kind of a little fetch northeast fetch in the nook and that would have sped up the chance of waves here on uh, instead of Sunday be Friday so that's not going to happen that did not happen at all but we're still going to see some waves from this low that's out here right now you have all this fetch right here now and this is going to expand a lot this way too and we're going to get uh, some nice waves to come down in this direction now it's not going to be huge or anything again it's kind of just the small to moderate uh, swell but at least it's something another change that looks like it happened was the winds now look like they're going to be on shore because the front actually may make it all the way down to the Straits of Florida and with that we switch the winds around very quickly to the northeast I'm hoping that uh, because it's a kind of a weak frontal boundary we may get that initial surge of north the northeast wind and then it'll die on off things will clean up a lot better and we'll still have some swell left over so uh, that's the best we can hope for right now. Let's just go through time here and just see how this evolves here. This is the GFS, the tool, the uh, what run is this? 12Z run from this morning. And, it, you know, it does, it shows pretty good position here with this. You, have, you see how this expands really nice here. Uh, pretty deep fetch going on right here. So that's nice. And although not directly pointing at us more so directly pointing at Delmarva Hatteras that should really blow up uh, we still you still get some kind of angle out of this here too and we will see some waves head down here into South Florida possibly even into Palm Beach County yes maybe even down in the southern Palm Beach County but most likely northern Palm Beach County northward is what we're thinking once again I mean we really need something kind of in this area here to have a good fetch pointed down to really shove it down into uh, all of Palm Beach County and get it into South County. So we'll go through time here and see how this all adds up. Notice, all right, it's pretty much gone by mm, Saturday, yeah, Saturday afternoon. So that leaves us a couple of days of waves after that. So we're talking maybe three days worth of waves now, um, which isn't bad. Uh, the European shows a lot less. It would maybe show a day or two's worth of waves, uh, but the GFS shows a, a solid three day wave for us. Um, but check this out here too. So this is Saturday and notice what's going on right here. A big push, that's the cold front has a decent push to it look here it is right here makes it through our area Saturday night Sunday morning right the low is way up here um, but the high is way down here it's off the screen right now but it's about level with right here so it being so far down it's about it's right on top of Louisiana actually so that enough will give it enough kick to like push it all down now again not the strongest the fronts this is our first one of the year more so call it a cool front instead of a cold front because it's lower temperature a few degrees it'll break some humidity though so it'll feel fantastic out there Sunday but of course it'll still be warm it's not like it's going to be knocking us out of the 80s and the 70s or anything like that we still have a little while to go before that happens but 
I want you to watch here. Let me scoot this over though for you. As we go here, Sunday, we do get this little surge of wind. Here, I'm going to zoom in and take a closer look with the... Uh, that way we can really get a, a good a good look at what the local winds are going to do. Since we we have the swell maker, I showed you the swell maker there. Um, size with that right now, we're just talking waist high, maybe some chest high waves at some spots. I do think it'll have a little bit more power than the last one because the fetch is a little bit deeper. Uh, so that's good. See, maybe you know a little bit more push to it at least. Um, and I think that will arrive by Sunday so check it out we have this is Sunday morning and the winds kind of side shore you know this is the morning so it may have a little kink to offshore there so offshore in the morning on Sunday as the swell starts to build on in I want you to notice this too stronger south weaker north and I'm going to show you that trend here coming up too so as we go through Sunday afternoon, the wind turns around. The initial uh, surge of the wind is there. So this is Sunday afternoon here. And notice, yes, we do push this straight out, you know, out of the northeast. That will pick up a drift. The swell starts to fill in there too. Um, but notice it's not terribly strong. I mean, maybe 10 knots, maybe a little bit, maybe 10 to 15. We'll say Sunday afternoon. So that'll make it a little choppier, a little bit less desirable, but. You know, not terrible. And then here comes the high. Here's the high right here. Look at that. Southern Georgia, that high is. So pretty far south. Let's go to Monday morning now. Swell still coming in. I think it'll probably peak, though, Sunday evening or overnight, Sunday night, Monday morning. Uh, but look at this here. This is Monday morning. So swell still coming in. Wind on shore. Pretty much all the purple area, I would say light to calm wind and that's pretty much treasure coast northward and we see the surge of northeast wind here still in the south florida say palm beach county southward so windier in south florida and palm beach county southward and more blown out and choppy there for monday morning but the farther north you head the less wind there's going to be and the cleaner it's going to get as we go through the day of course the sea breeze will take over and everything will turn on shore. It's just the farther up coast you go, they'll just, it'll just be like kind of a light onshore crinkle, especially up towards New Smyrna, north of the Cape. Maybe just a light onshore texture is about all you're gonna see. South of the Cape, maybe a little bit stronger, but not bad. And then, like I said, south of there, Palm Beach, uh, we're talking probably 10 to maybe even 15 or so. And then it dies down for Monday night. And then by Tuesday morning, I think still a little bit coming in then, still a little bit of swell, less wind though. So now we might be talking about, even though all the arrows are pointed like this, when it gets this light, we get the land breeze to take over and we can get a little offshore breeze right for the Dawn patrollers in the morning on Tuesday with the dropping swell, uh, maybe knee to waist high or so. I think there'll still be something coming in. Uh, again, the best bet though, Northern Palm Beach County northward up towards the treasure coast and you know the usual spots that get bigger waves sebastian and uh melbourne area they'll get a little bit bigger than that on tuesday but all in all it's going to start to drop by tuesday anyways but the wind is dropping too so it's kind of a fighting battle there between catching the swell dropping and catching the wind dropping too and cleaning it up but i do think uh sunday we'll start to get that swell to push on in by Monday, we're gonna to start to clean it up, especially north of Palm Beach County. We're gonna clean it up to probably glassy to semi-glassy conditions. Uh, Treasure Coast northward, Space Coast, all we'll see, you know, cleaner conditions out of the northeast uh, with a solid waist plus swell Monday morning, maybe stomach high or so. And the usual spots will be a little bit bigger. Again, I think there'll be a little bit more push to it. So that'll be nice because the last one was pretty weak and I think the one before that was pretty darn weak too. Uh, and now let's just look and see through the very extended because I showed you this before on Sunday and it's still showing it as we go all the way through time here. Alright, so look at what happens here. So we have a 
a much stronger cold front push through around mid-October. Here it is here. Look at that. Pushes through. We have a tropical disturbance here. Tropical storm developing to the south. And somehow it ignores the cold front and just keeps going north up towards us. Very nice. So something suspect there, but what do I say about uh, looking at the longer range forecast? We're kind of looking for a trend here. And then the trend is that some kind of tropical activity might develop up in here. So as we go into mid-October, let's not let our guard down in the tropics because I think the area that's going to be ripe for development and actually have conditions that are going to be ripe for development are going to be up in here. There might be some kind of tropical activity in this area right here. Say mid-October or just the month of October. Now, that's not a shocker because this is where you would normally see it in the month of October. But th there are some indications that we may see something uh, happening here. What I'm talking about, we have... Well, the first front, you always look in here, back into the Gulf, when a front comes and dies out down here, sometimes something develops here. Uh, then we got this front, that's kind of moved down here with high pressure right here, and then this will move up in this direction. And a lot of times when you have that up here, what develops down here is another tropical system. So something to watch here, and I think even though you know the GFS can be loopy at times, always shows tropical activity and storms and hurricanes all over the place for nothing. It may be on to something here. So this is some place to watch in a couple of weeks at the moment. And uh, the good news as we get into October too, uh, we may get a few cold fronts in here. There may be you know at least a few that come down here and break this heat. It does look like that first one will come through Saturday night, Sunday. Uh, again, not the strongest of cold fronts, but any little bit edging off this humidity would be great. And I think that'll happen. And then possibly, a, you know, a week later, we get this one to come through. October might be a very good month for us. I don't have the map on me right now, but I saw it earlier. And uh, the month of October did show below normal temps on average for the state of Florida. So uh, getting a little bit of backing now for this kind of idea that we're gonna have a few fronts move through in October. It's been my experience though, we get these early season fronts, November goes completely dead and we don't see a cold front move through here through the whole month of November. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, but also a good thing too here is the NAO. And let me just move this up here. So the NAO, this is what we start to look at now instead of the MJO for the tropics. But when once we start getting into fall and winter, we start to look at the NAO and the NAO forecast to tank right here. We want the NAO negative because what that does is that allows, I keep moving the map, but that allows these systems to take more of a track like this out to sea here because there's more of a, a blocking pattern up here and it doesn't allow it to go up here like this. So uh, when you get that negative NAO, that kind of forces these storm tracks out to sea like that. And of course, on the back side of that, we get some good fetch and some swell to move on in. Now, positive NAO would pretty much send storms right up the coast like this. We would get a northwest flow, uh, possibly a refraction. But then even after that, that wind turns quickly onshore. We get a big old high out here and all we get is a little bit of wind chop. So we definitely like the fact that we're seeing this. In fact, if we could get this kind of thing, I know you see the forecast here has it going back up to uh, either neutral or positive, but if we can get this thing to lock in for the winter at about this, this amount here at minus two, oh my goodness, we'd have a great winter with a lot of storms heading off the coast and pretty much every cold front giving us waves. Uh, you know, we get one about once a week, sometimes, you know, once every three or four days. That would always send swell and we get some ideal conditions. Uh, good thing is, too, you do see it go up like this, but you also see right afterwards going down like that. A little indication that maybe that mid-October 
cold front is going to make it down here and also may spin off a low and give us a nice little swell with that too. So that's the forecast. I'm going to update the words here in a few minutes and I'll attach this. So next time waves, we're talking Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, three days of waves coming up. See you out in the water. Peace.